you'll find at some point that you'll need to calculate certain values with PHP. And as with most languages, PHP allows you to add, subtract, divide, multiply, and perform other arithmetic as well. Now we'll start with some basic examples, we'll move on to some more complex operators, and of course along the way we will look at some practical examples. So let's start with the example where we have a variable called views, and I'm going to assign this initially the value zero. Now let's imagine we have a view count stored somewhere for perhaps an article on a website or anything like that. In this case, every time the article is viewed, we would want to increment this. Now obviously at the moment, this is just stored within our code. We would have to store this in a database, but let's take a look at how we would do this. And then later on, you'll be able to learn how to do things like store things in databases. So uh, normally what we would do is say something like views and then we would reassign this the value now what we haven't discussed is that we can reassign a variable the same value so if we were to do this and then echo out views over in the browser we would see we get zero so we get exactly the same result but what we can do now is we can assign it the same value but at the same time we can add a number onto it and this would obviously give us one so we can change this around to any number we want. Of course, we can change this around to a float as well, despite the fact that this is uh, an integer to start with. So let's have a look at this. And you can see that that just works in exactly the same way. Now, what happens when we add a string? Now, you wouldn't normally do this, but you can see that it has the same effect. And that's the concept that we spoke about earlier of typecasting. PHP will automatically cast this to a number because it sees that we are trying to add it on. So for now, let's just stick to plus one. Now, of course, what we can also do is down here, we could say views again equals views plus one. Now, what this would do is it would reassign it to the value one because zero add one is obviously one. And then what it would do is it would reassign it again. This part variable here is now one. So we just carry on doing it. So you can see here we get two. So this is pretty straightforward, but there is a slightly easier way to do this if you only wanted to add one onto a number, and that is to use plus plus. So what this will do is it will set views to views plus plus, but we don't actually need to do this. We'll have a look in a moment. Now you can see here we've got zero. Now what's happening here is we are assigning it the value, but all we really need to do here is start off with a variable, say views plus plus, and we end up with one. So it might be a little bit confusing that we don't reassign it, but essentially all we're doing here is we're telling PHP to increment this by one. And we could do this multiple times as well. So if we were to do it three times, you can see we end up with three. So pretty straightforward. Okay, so now that we know the basics of adding, let's take a look at a more real world example and we'll dive into some other operators. So let's say we wanted to find out if we were running some kind of website like Code Course, the percentage of uh, an entire course that had been completed. So let's say we start out with a variable called total lessons. And let's say that uh, as part of that, we had say 30 lessons or 30 courses, whatever. And we had a completed lessons value. And this is how many lessons or parts the user has completed. Now what we want to do down here is work out the percentage of lessons that have been completed. So as we know, the formula for calculating uh, the percentage of seven inside of 30 is seven divided by 30, and then it's multiplied by 100. Now I've already given you a clue as to some of the operators we've used here. So we can go ahead and apply this to a new variable. So we're gonna say percentage complete, and we're gonna set this to and we're going to use parentheses here because remember the order of things that we do, uh, if we have them in parentheses, they are run first. Now, if we weren't to use these, we would get an odd result. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. So we just say completed lessons. And as we said, it's divided by the total amount. So in this case, it's total lessons. And then after this, we multiply this by 100. Now, this might seem odd, but the asterisk symbol is for multiplying and the forward slash here is for dividing. So as long as you remember that, then you're good to go. Okay, so now what we can do is we can echo out, you've completed, and I'm using double quotes here, so we can uh, place this variable directly within it. And we're gonna say percentage complete, and remember we're using curly braces here because we want a percentage symbol directly after the variable. And if we didn't include that in there, uh, PHP would show us an error. And we'll just say of this course or of all of our courses 
or whatever we were going to say. So let's give this a refresh and you can see here you've completed 23.3 recurring percent of this course. Now obviously this value here isn't uh, anything that you would want to output to a user because obviously you would want to kind of round this down. Now let's just take a very quick look at what happens if we don't include this percentage or these uh, parentheses sorry and if we come over you can see we do get exactly the same result here so it looks like what's happening here is this uh, divided by operation is being completed first but in more advanced cases it's usually a good idea to include parentheses I like to do this anyway just so I know exactly what operation is being completed first despite the fact that PHP picked up on that for us okay so what we want to do now is fix this problem with 22 23.3 uh, recurring so we can do a couple of things we can round this down or we can use a handy PHP function called number format and I would recommend using this. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap the value that we get back from this operation inside of that number format variable. We could create a new variable if we wanted to uh, or we could just reassign it. So let's go ahead and reassign it and then I'll show you how to inline this so it's a little bit tidier. So here we're going to say number format. You can see that my uh, text editor has already given me that function for me but that's pretty much it and then all we do is we place in the percentage complete. So what that's done is it's used number format. This would have returned to us a formatted number and then it would have reassigned it to percentage complete, which we're using down here. So we should be good to go. And there we go. So what this has done is it's removed all of the decimal places. But what we can do, if you wanted to be a little bit more specific, you can pass another argument to this. Now we haven't looked at functions yet, but we will be later on. Uh, hopefully this isn't too confusing. So if I wanted to say, well, I want two decimal places on here, you can see that it's given me 22, uh, 23.33. If I was to do one, you can imagine we get the same result. You can explicitly pass zero through to here and we get the same result, but usually it's just a bit tidier to leave that off. And you can see that we get 23%, brilliant. So let's look at inlining this just so it's a little bit tidier. There's not really much need to create a new variable here uh, because this is a pretty simple operation. So what we would do in this case then is we don't need this line anymore. We can just go ahead and say number format and then we can start our parentheses here and end just here. So we've basically wrapped that operation we had before inside the number format function. Give that a refresh and we get exactly the same result. Okay, so we've covered division and multiplication. Subtraction is really simple. You probably have already guessed the operator for this, but let's go and look at a very basic example. So let's get rid of this one. And we're going to say balance equals 500. Just imagine this is some kind of bank balance. And we have a cost of an item. And let's say that's 25. So we know that in this case, we would get 475 if we were to subtract the cost. And we can go ahead and just echo the balance out. And we can assign this at the same time. Remember, we looked earlier that we can do that. And we're going to say balance minus. So it's just a hyphen here and then minus the cost like that. So here we get 475. And of course, we can go ahead and get rid of the echo there and do it on a new line if we need to. And we get exactly the same result. OK, so uh, we've already covered incrementing, but let's just remind ourselves of doing something like views equals zero and then saying views plus plus and go ahead and echo views because we're also going to look at decrementing a number as well, decreasing it by one if we need to. Now we get one because we've added a uh, view count on here and the same pretty much goes for decrementing. We know that the plus symbol is to add. Now what we can do is go ahead and use minus minus or hyphen hyphen to go ahead and decrement a view and naturally because we started with zero we now know that minus one we get the value minus one. OK, so now that we've looked at that, this brings me on to if we need to be a little bit quicker and cleaner about adding or subtracting uh, larger numbers than one. We know that by doing something like views equals zero, if we wanted to add two onto this, we would have to say views equals views plus two. And sometimes uh, when you're programming, it's just about being a little bit quicker and a little bit cleaner. So let's say that we had some kind of point system. Maybe we were building a game and we wanted to add 10 points onto the score that the user has accumulated. Well, in this case, we would have to say points equals points and then plus 10, a little bit long to write. What we can actually do here is we can get rid of most of this 
and instead we can say plus equals which is pretty much the same as what we just did here so that's a little bit shorter and a little bit cleaner and just tends to be a little bit faster to type so let's go ahead and echo point and you can see that we've got 10 so it's worked pretty much in the same way uh, and it's nice and quick we can do the same for minus as well so say if we wanted to add 10 points on and then maybe we wanted to remove two points we know that we would end up with eight and that's exactly what we get okay then so to finish things off we're going to look at two less frequently used but equally important operators the first one is modulus which will return the remainder of a number when it's divided by another so this is uh, pretty uh, useful in some circumstances but if you are doing calculations then uh, this might be very useful so i'm going to create two variables a and b now to use the modulus operator all we go ahead and do is either assign this to a variable or echo it out in this case i'm going to go ahead and echo it out and we use a percentage sign so if we do a mod or modulus b typically we would call it mod then we'll see the result here which is two so we know that the remainder here is going to be two now this is obviously just useful if you're interested in the remainder of a number for any specific reason but it also has other uses now let's imagine that you were building some kind of table and you wanted a different color for each row of the table within html if you know HTML, you'll know that you can apply classes or styles to a table. Now we're going to look at an example that uses a loop. Don't worry, we haven't looked at loops yet, but we will be covering that uh, soon. So let's go ahead and look at this example then. Let's say we wanted to output 10 rows within a table. Now we're going to say for, now this is called a for loop, which allows us to initialize a number and then go ahead and loop, so run this block, we already know what a block is, uh, a specific amount of times under a certain condition. So the first thing that we do is we say row equals one, so we're creating a new variable, that's not to be confused with rows, and then we're saying while the row that we are uh, looping in is less than or equal to rows, so that's the amount of rows we want to loop, and this is where everything comes together when we say rows plus plus. So just to recap what we're doing here, we will be getting onto loops, but we're incrementing the rows or rather row variable that we've assigned here. So it starts off at one, we're incrementing it. And this is the condition that this block continues to run. So while row, which we're incrementing is less than or equal to rows, then we uh, go ahead and run this block. All this means in this case is we're counting or rather looping 10 times. So to test this out, we can echo out uh, well, let's just echo one out and go ahead and apply a HTML break. If we go ahead and refresh, you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So that's pretty much how we would count from one to 10 within a loop. Now what we need to do is work out if a row is even or odd and give it a color uh, specifically. Now we're not gonna be doing that because we'll dive into some more practical examples later, but all we would want to do in here is use an if statement to say, well, does the current row number mod two equals zero? That means that we have uh, an even row that we can go ahead and color. Otherwise, we're gonna echo out odd. So you would apply a specific color here. All this means then is if we go ahead and refresh, you see odd, even, odd, even, odd, even, odd, even, and so on and so forth. So we could go ahead and increase the value here and it would go ahead and just continue to work. You can bump this up to any uh, number as well. So it's pretty long here. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense, but if it doesn't, don't worry, we're gonna get to loops later uh, and look at all that kind of stuff. Okay, so the last operator we're going to look at is the exponentiation operator. This will simply raise a number to a specific power. Personally, I've never found a use for this while programming, but if you are building something that does require this, then this is gonna be really useful and it's worth just knowing about it anyway. So I'm gonna create a variable called a, and obviously if we wanted to raise this to a power of two, we just use two multiply symbols, two asterisks. So in this case, this would be 10 times 10 because we've applied two, we're raising it to a power of two, and obviously we get the value 100. Okay, so next we're going to just try this out with something like nine, and obviously this means 10 times 10 times 10, nine times, and we know that this is a billion, so we end up with a billion. We've got three, 
three and three so we know that that's a billion so that is just a, an operator if you do need it but day-to-day -day development if you're building a product it never really gets used okay so you now have everything you need to work with arithmetic in php you won't like i said always need to use all of this but specifically adding subtracting incrementing decrementing are really important and you'll probably be doing that a lot